real life scenario that happened to me and it started in the middle of the United Nations General Assembly Hall. I just attended this huge presentation. There was a very famous Academy Award winning actor that just became a United Nations Goodwill Ambassador. So what I need is I need you to guess who that actor was. Leo, who else? It's not Leo. Three guesses. Brittany, did you say Brittany? Oh, it's not Clooney. One more. It's not Angelina Jolie. It's Forrest Whitaker. So he just finished this huge speech, middle of the United Nations, and he's surrounded by hundreds of crazy fans. So we're going to reenact this right now. What I need on the stage right now is I need one person to come up and act as our Forrest Whitaker for the day. Who is it going to be? Sir, with the glasses? The one who just looked at his friend to tell him to come up? You're coming right up. What's your name? I'm Danny. Danny, yeah. come right here. Now, Danny, you... Okay, give him a hand. Give him a hand. Danny, you're Forrest Whitaker, okay? It's really believable. You look just like him. So what I need is I need about five or six groupies from the audience, sir, with a beautiful smile. Yes, scratching your head right there, second row. Ladies, with the glasses on the head, one, two, three, please come right up. Sir, with the nice plaid, the one looking around, sir, front row, come right up. And I need one more. Ma'am, I love your earrings. Can you come right up? Bring your cell phones. Now, this is what's going to happen. This is Forrest Whitaker. He's a huge celebrity. You want to interview him. So what's going to happen is I'm going to stand over here. And I'm going to count to three. And when I say the word go, all of you groupies, what you're going to do is you're going to gently attack Forrest Whitaker. And try to figure out what that means. You're going to gently attack Forrest Whitaker. Forrest, you're an actor. You cannot leave the stage. You're nice. You want to leave. You want to go back to your room, but you're being kind to them. Okay, got it? So when I say go, gently attack. You want to leave, but you can't. Got it? Got it. Okay, one, two, three, Go. Gently. Meanwhile, you're standing about 50 yards away thinking, how can I possibly reach Forrest? Did I tell you to stop? How can I possibly reach Forrest Whitaker? I have no contact. I have no, I have no credentials. There's no reason he should listen to me. But you start, I've got to do something. I'm trying to interview him for my show. I have to reach him. What am I going to do? You run up to him. Groupies, move. Please, out of the way. You grab his arm and you say, Forrest, I'm going to get you out of here. And he looks at you like, who is this little kid touching my lower back? And you yell to the crowd, ladies and gentlemen, groupies, no more pictures, no more autographs. Mr. Whitaker has to leave the building. And they part like the Red Sea. And you proceed to walk Forrest Whitaker out the door of the United Nations, down the streets of New York City, back to his hotel, and you've officially been his bodyguard for the day. Can we have a round of applause for Forrest Whitaker and the groupies? Thank you, so thank you, brother. Thank you. I share that story because I had no credentials. I had no professional credentials in order to be able to do that. But that story illustrates how I've been able to do everything in my professional life from traveling to Mongolia for National Geographic to live as a nomad, from emceeing a major event for the United Nations in Brazil at 23 years old with no prior experience, to filming my first television show for PBS on the Pine Ridge Indian Reservation. And the one thing that I have done is I have started at step Z. I have believed in myself. We each have a place in our life, everyone in this room right now, we each have a place in our life where we are at step A, and we would like to get to step Z. A goal, some vision, we haven't yet reached it yet. And perhaps we won't feel happy until we do. Me, myself, I'm no different. I have convinced myself that there is something I cannot be happy without. It doesn't matter that I travel the world for National Geographic. It doesn't matter that I come from a loving family. It doesn't matter that I'm in great health. It doesn't matter that I'm together with 600 of the most inspired entrepreneurs, business people, and young professionals in all of Knoxville. If I'm being really honest, I have convinced myself that my life won't truly have meaning until I am in a committed, intimate relationship, until I have a partner. I wonder if it's the same for anyone out there. If there's one place in your life, hey, maybe your life is pretty good. Maybe you think my life is pretty good, but my life will really have meaning when I find the perfect husband, 
or wife or when I'm single. I see that one hit a chord. <laughs> or if I could just lose this weight. Or if I could just travel more. If I could just get into that program, then I will be happy. The problem with believing that happiness comes from something outside of ourselves is twofold. One, it increases our attachment to that thing, whatever it may be for us. And the second thing is it increases our identification as someone who is not enough without. What our society teaches us from a very early age is that we are not enough. And we need more in order to be happy. I live in New York City where we have Times Square. And in Times Square, what you will find are 300-foot billboards, posters, television screens filled with beautiful people that we're supposed to date, beautiful places we're supposed to go on vacation, clothes to wear, things to buy, places to eat, mountains to climb. And every single one of these ads, if you check closely and read between the lines, they're all saying the same exact thing. Your happiness is out here. I'd like to buy a huge sign, cover up that billboard in the middle of Times Square and have it say, you already have everything you need. That would be the truth. So I want everyone right now to sit up in their seats, take a deep breath, and think about what is that step Z for you? What is that item? What is that vision what is that person? What is that new house? What is that thing that you feel you really can't be happy without? That sensitive area, that untouchable topic, the one you don't want anyone to bring up. We're so focused on that object. We're so focused that we forget we're not only the main actor in the script of our life, we're also the one holding the projector. We're also the one writing the script. What I want you to recognize, including myself, what I want us to recognize together is that we're not actually seeking that thing. We're not actually seeking that person. We're not seeking that relationship. We're not seeking that new job title. We're not seeking that money for our nonprofit. We're not seeking any of those things. What we're seeking is the feeling that we think those things will bring. So what I would like to suggest today is that we step into that feeling and act from that place. The question is not, what can I do? What can I do? The question is, who can you become? And together, today, we're going to understand how to become global citizens, how to become citizens of the world. A global citizen is very simple. It's someone that authentically connects with others. In the present moment, it's someone that is completely present. And it is someone that is inspired by a mission that is greater than themselves. And I promise if we apply these rules to our life, they will affect not only our personal relationships, our professional relationships, but will also ripple an impact out into the entire world. And today I'm not gonna tell you to accept what I'm saying because I'm saying it. Let's do what Bruce Lee once suggested, which is absorb what is useful, reject what is useless, and add what is essentially our own. Can you dig it? Wow, I'm done. Okay. See you next year. Thank you so much, Knoxville. It's been great. I said, can you dig it? Yeah. A little better, but let me show you what I'm looking for. 60,000 soldiers. Yeah. Now, there ain't but 20,000 police in the whole town. Can you dig it? Can you dig it? Can you dig it? Yeah. a fictional character. This is a real life story. Black Benji and Timmy, can we have the house lights on a little? I'd like to be able to see the faces and the eyes of the people that are in this room. Oh, perfect. Not that bright, but just enough. <laughs> Black Benji brought all of the gangs together, perfect, in the 1970s with the Bronx Gang Summit with this one slogan of peace. All these gangs, they were killing each other. They were murdering each other. They were stepping into other people's territory. And he brought them together with this one slogan of peace. Can you dig it? Unfortunately, right after he said that, he was killed. So that's not going to happen here today. Everyone, pay attention. When I come into the crowd, if you do not want me to call on you, go like this. Otherwise, I'm going to grab you. So I would like you to cover your face 
if you are very, very nervous and do not want to speak in public, that way I know not to call on you. Cover your face. Cover your face. Oh, you're all on to me already. You know that I'm going to do that. <laughs> Who would never, ever speak in public in a million years? Who is super nervous? I'm getting this, like, energy. I'm being drawn to you. Would you like to come on stage? Come right up. Come right up. What's your name? Hannah. Hannah? Are you nervous or not at all? Okay. Don't, 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 don't worry. It's going to be totally fine. Hannah, I'm Chris. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Hannah, we can do this right here. So, Hannah, you're going to grab this mic. Now, this room is yours. You are Black Benji. So, what's going to happen is you're going to say, can you dig it? And then hold the mic for your mates on the stoop. And they're going to respond, yes. You have three chances to blow the roof off of the building. And on the third time, I need everyone to be going crazy. Each time, you need to get louder and louder, Hannah. Can you do that? Can you do, can we get that mic on? With, check, yep, okay. we got it. Hannah, the floor is yours. All right, can you guys dig it? Yeah. I said, can you dig it? Yeah. Can you dig it? Yes! Awesome, Hannah, thank you so much. Thank you, awesome. That ideally works if we're, Hannah's actually extremely confident with the microphone. If we're someone that's super nervous and we grab that microphone, that's not going to exactly fit into the script of what we would do on a normal basis. We need to do things that shake the foundation of who we think we are. We need to do things that shake the foundation of who we think we are, that push us outside of our comfort zones. 